On today's show, I pay tribute to all you wonderful Lushes who want nothing more than to watch me get liquor fished up. Hello, food freaks, and welcome to That's Rank. Today, we're getting down and dirty with a whole lot of red vines. Red vines were introduced all the way back in the 1920s by the American Licorice Company, who decided to call them red vines, even though these are clearly black. Now, I'm about to make a fairly startling confession, so I urge you to hold on to your seats and possibly your loved ones. I have never had a red vine. Yeah, I'm sorry that you had to hear that. You know what? I'll give you a moment to find your zen place. Let the evil so here's the thing. Canada is Twizzlers country. I think there's a Canadian distribution of red vines, but nowhere near the scale of Twizzlers, so they've remained completely and totally off my radar. Not that I eat a whole lot of licorice to start with, that's totally road trip snacking, but when I do, I grab a waxy, oily package of Twizzlers, and now that I say it like that, I'm not exactly sure why, because none of that sounds appealing. But here's the thing, the people who've chosen to swipe right on red vines swear that these are vastly different and superior to the Twizzler, and today that's what we're looking to find out. And while I don't have every red vine product on the market, I do have all the flavors that they offer, so we should get a fairly good idea about the veracity of this licorice. And you know what, if it's awful, I'll just use it for fishing bait. Licorice does work great for any kind of freshwater fishing because if you just dip it in, you'll catch all sorts. So first up, we got the vine that started the multi-million dollar empire that we see today, the original red vine. And well, you know what, that's actually a lie. The original product was the black licorice twist. This version didn't arrive until the 1950s when the company had rebranded itself officially as Red Vines. The most famous moment for the flagship product came at the 2017 Oscars when Jimmy Kimmel made it rain Red Vines from the ceiling on an unsuspecting crowd below. And now, of course, this was back in the era when it was the host that did unpredictable things to the crowd and not vice versa. <laughs> oh, wow. These don't seem to come with the same easy to close resealable bag that the Twizzlers come in. So that's a bit of a letdown. So as a licorice, this looks incredibly similar to a Twizzlers because it's got the same rotini pasta shape to it. And it's actually similarly sticky as well from the sugars. And the smell coming off this is that familiar strawberry-like scent. So, so far it's basically a doppelganger. Hmm. So. If I had eaten Twizzlers for the first time as an adult, I probably would not have been a fan. I've started to notice, and this is only a recent discovery, but they're kind of oily and have like a plasticiness to them. This I find is actually a much easier bite. It's softer and I'll be it a lot less sweeter, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Y'all know I'm sensitive to sugar and these are packing less comparative to a Twizzlers. So if you're looking for a more synthetic and sweeter candy, Twizzlers is probably the way to go, but I don't know, I might actually already be a convert. I may have to hold a head-to-head -head competition between licorices, because I won't lie, I'm very easily influenced by whatever is sitting in front of me at that moment in time. But I definitely like these, and as a licorice, I can see why they hold a place in a lot of your hearts. So for today's rankings, really easy. It's in first place because I haven't actually ranked anything else, but I feel very decisive about this. Up second today are the red vines with lowered sugar. Typically speaking, these are made for diabetics. And while I'm not personally diabetic, my body does have a serious hate on for sugar. So in recent years, I've made an attempt to try some of these lower sugared candies. And in short, I don't like them. First of all, they taste weird. It's got this sugar alcohol that they use in place of sugar. And I don't appreciate that. It's got a really weird and funky aftertaste, almost like the morning after you've been drinking all night. You know that yucky rotten mouth feeling? You need to gargle like a whole bottle of scope before you even brush your teeth because you don't want your toothbrush seeing your mouth in that state. And secondly, uh, how do I put this politely? You eat too much of this and you're gonna be taking the Browns to the Super Bowl. So basically the stuff that they use in these candies is not naturally absorbed by your system. So it's gonna rip you up harder than a Taco Bell mukbang. Needless to say, I'm only gonna be eating a singular red vine because I do not need to spend my night keeled over and praying for Jesus to take me quickly. Now, oh, they're falling apart, that's good. It does have the same general red vine smell as the standard, although this one feels a fair bit softer than the other one, and obviously it doesn't stay together. This is exactly what I thought it was, and it's gross. Honestly, I know that diabetics deserve treats as well, but there's got to be a better way because this stuff right here is nasty. This is why you can't buy Haribo sugarless gummy bears anymore. It was made with this crap that's in here. Well, that and... Ah. 
So to absolutely nobody's surprise, these are in last where they're going to be staying, barring some sort of seismic shift in the universe between now and, uh, well, five minutes from now. Red binds made simple. You're not going to find any ingredients in here that are going to induce early backdoor labor like these last ones over here. Made simple refers to the fact that they're only using natural ingredients, right down to radish extract to color them. In theory, that's okay. I just hope that they didn't accidentally juice a couple of radishes into these because uh, you know what? The sugarless ones might actually have a way out of last place after all. This is why it's important never to give up. You never know what kind of radish related accidents might be sitting right around the corner. Well, it doesn't smell like anything that a rabbit would be attracted to, which is bad news for these last place red vines. So these are every bit as dangerous to me as the sugarless red vines, but more because these are actually sugar bombs. Six grams of sugar per vine. They're not screwing around at all. They're ready to bear it all with nothing but natural sugar running through this thing. Now these taste different than the normal ones, but that's because I've actually got the mixed berry flavor of these instead of the normal red vine flavor. I did want to mix it up a little and see if a different flavor would chart a little bit better on the ratings. It actually doesn't, like it's a pleasant flavor and they're a little bit softer than the original, but I still think I prefer the flavor of a normal red vine to this one. So without question, these are easily going into second place. Well, I might have gone ahead and screwed this one up for myself, folks, because I love black licorice. Yeah, you know what? I'm one of those guys, but I seem to have gotten the lower sugar variety by mistake which is a miss because I think that normal black licorice in standard form might have actually had a chance to topple the classic red vine, but lowered sugar, like it's probably gonna be a miracle if these even place in the final rankings. You know what? Let's get this over with. Well, 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 <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to say something, I promise. I don't totally hate these. Let's be clear. I still would not eat the entire pack of them because these are not worth the pain that comes alongside them. But the strength of the star anise almost actually managed to overpower some of the awful aftertaste. So these aren't good. Low sugar treats are basically a waste of perfectly good candy making resources. So for that reason, I can't in good conscience rank these any higher than third, but that's exactly where I'm gonna place them because they're way, way, way better than this red version where the aftertaste is like licking an ashtray. Well, we're ending on a wild card with the grape flavor. These are actually just the standard red vine formula, just flavored differently. And even though I have a pretty professed distaste for fake flavors, I do like fake grape most of the time. Now, from what I've read, these are a little hard to find. Typically speaking, even most regions of the USA aren't likely to have these on the shelves. So apparently I hit the lottery in red vine hunting. There is no question that these are grape flavored. Just doing that grape thing where it's just pounding my nose with that very familiar and unmistakable grape candy smell. You know what this reminds me of? Grape Kool-Aid. And I don't know why that immediately came into my head because I haven't had grape Kool-Aid since I was probably about eight years old, but memories are really flooding back in right now. In a positive way, I've got no hate for Kool-Aid at all. I grew up on it, hell, you know, I even made it. Now, when I did, I tripled the sugar because apparently I was on a mission to ensure that I'd be on my worst behavior all the time. So we already know it's better than either of these sugarless options, um, but it's also better than the all natural one. So. Now we're down to the battle of a classic and the hot new car in the lot. And given how today's gone, I, I've got to stick with the classic. Even though I have no specific nostalgia to pull from, given today was the first time I ever even had a red vine in my life, there's something about that red licorice flavor that really is so hard to beat. As an episode, today was actually a rare win because I really enjoyed myself and I may have actually found myself a new road trip snack. Is it better than Twizzlers? Well, it's hard to say. I'd actually have to compare them side by side to be absolutely sure, but where do you stand on the Twizzlers versus Red Vine debate? I'd love for you to comment below, and if you have not already done so, I need you to hit the subscribe button because if you do, I will love you forever. <laughs>